Hello people, this is the second lecture of week five. And uh, what I wanna do today is first, the leftover from Tuesday's lectures, I'm gonna do another assembly problem, which involves a, a bimetallic strip. And then once I'm done that, then I will go and start a new topic, which is called hybrid analysis. I'll talk about that thing later on, okay? Now, uh, the problem that we want to do is uh, a, a, a bar like that, that's consisting of two pieces of aluminum and a steel, which are perfectly, perfectly bonded together. Whether that's possible or not, is not our concern right now. Now, uh, the ends of the bar, the ends of both bars are clamped, and then uh, it is subjected to a temperature rise of 50 degrees above the uh, room room temp temperature okay <clears throat> now uh, so uh, the first question is what happens uh, when you raise this thing uh, raise the temperature this uh, is going to bend the question is the question that i have for you is whether it bends down or it went or it bends up okay uh, now aluminum has a larger coefficient of ex uh, larger coefficient of expansion than steel and therefore we will see that it i'm not going to give you the answer we'll find out and we call, come and talk about it later on okay all right so uh, there is some information about uh, the uh, coefficient of thermal expansion of uh, some of the material aluminum and different kind of steel, but uh, let's not worry about it right now. I'm gonna go there. We have to solve this thing as an assembly problem because they are uh, consisting of two pieces. So I'm gonna insert a new part in there. By the way, there's a plane of symmetry in the middle. So uh, if you look at this, uh, there is a plane of symmetry that you should take into account. So don't model the whole morning, model half of it, okay, half an inch. So let me call this thing aluminum <coughs> properties. I'll call it aluminum strip. Alu aluminum strip. On top. All right. So let me copy and paste this full on to remember. I'm going to paste it here. Yeah. All right, let's go make it. Uh, double click on a convenient plane. For example, on that vertical plane, I will sketch. <coughs> I'll sketch a, a rectangle, six inches long, half an inch wide. So uh, to make them these things, this is six. This is. 0.5, half, half the width, 0.5, and you say OK, exit, uh, actually let me, yeah, no, pad it, pad it, up by 0.125, I think the thickness of those things are given, 0.125, Okay, okay. Good. I think it was point one two five. Oh point two point two five, sorry. Double click on this. Point two five. Okay. Point two five. Good. <coughs> and you make the uh, assign the properties of aluminum to it. So apply material, aluminum on this part, and then we say okay. All right, now we're going to go all the way to the top, insert a new part in there. We say okay, right click properties, and this was called steel, so top case. We're going to call this thing steel strip. Steel strip. Below. 
one in the bottom. All right, so let me uh, copy this and paste it in there. All right, make it. Double click on this, on that same convenient plane right there. <coughs> Sketch because I'm too lazy to do that. I will just project that circle. Uh, sorry, project that face and exit, and it's there. And I'm gonna pad this in the other direction by 0.25. What well, uh, this is going to be still 0.25. Where is it? 0.25. Is that okay? Uh, and we are part properties of species, so then it's still on that steel part, and then we go there. Now we can change the color if you want, but I'll leave it the way it is. So all the way to, uh, we're done, we can save this thing, but I'm not going to do that. Bad idea, so go to the analysis, so uh, analysis and simulation, a generative structure analysis. Okay, Katia automatically meshes these things. Now, these elements are horrible, so I'm going to change it and make it smaller as far as size goes. Make it 0.1. You know, the thickness of that thing was 0.25 anyway, so. Uh, and this one also will make it uh, 0.1. And they, they are linear, okay? So if you, if you want, you can see them like Except that you have to change the rendering so that you can see the elements. There's one from the top, you can see that. Okay, good. We activate it. We activate it. Now, <coughs> these, uh, let me actually, yeah, let me turn it like that. Uh, uh, these are uh, clamp. So this is clamp. This is clamp. And this is clamp. Good. And the whole thing is subjected to a temperature rise of 50 degrees centigrade, 50 Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that, that means above the room te temperature. Okay, you have to be careful on what this thing is. It says that the structure is subjected to a uniform temperature rise of 50 degrees. That means above something. So it's going to be above uh, 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 room temperature. And room temperature is uh, 72 degrees, right? 72 degrees. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, fine. So, how do we apply that? So, you see this? If you look at the load, obviously, this is a thermal load. If you look at the load, this one, you don't recognize. It says temperature field. You click on it. And... You select, uh, both of these are subjected to temperature rise, so you have to do one at a time. This one it puts a big T here, but you have to be careful here. It says temperature of 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. This is not the temperature rise. This is, this is the actual temperature. So if we have uh, uh, 70, uh, for example, uh, uh, if you have a 50 degree Fahrenheit above the room temperature, so the actual temperature is 122, right? 120 degrees. Uh, I'm sorry, the room temperature in Fahrenheit, just a second. What was it? This was Fahrenheit, oh yeah, Fahrenheit 72 degrees is the room temperature. And this is set by the, by the, uh, uh, computer, you can change that reference temperature. As a matter of fact, let me show you something. Cancel that. Uh, yeah, I already did that. Let me also do the other one, but I want to show you something here. So uh, let me let me do another one. We, we're going to clean up that number. The number is not correct. We have to fix it. Okay, we have to fix it. We will. I'm going to click on that and select the bottom. Put another T there. For the bottom piece, uh, yeah, that's the bottom piece. I hope I'm not sure. This was put on the top one, right? 
and another one at the bottom piece. Oh, you know what? There's a problem here because when I padded these, when I padded it, for some reason I might have done the thing incorrectly, mirror extent or something. Let me go fix it. Let me go fix it. When I did that steel piece, I think I inadvertently uh, did it in the wrong direction or in mirror extent. So let's, let me go here. Yeah. Not mirror extent. I really did not mean that. Flip it down below. Okay, good. That's because that's when I was trying to put the temperature, it would put also on the top piece. So, uh, uh, let me click on that. Now, click, so like this, notice that it put to the different spot. Okay. The different spot, you can see that. Look, T, T. And say, okay. Now, this number is that I put there is not right. However, I want to show you something. When you go, when you go to static, uh, uh, sorry, double click on the environment, double click on the environment, double click on this. It tells you what the room temperature is. Initial temperature, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the room temperature. So <clears throat> the temperature above that is going to be 50 plus this. So 118, okay? 118, yes, 0.018. But I'll use just 68, okay? 68 plus 50 is 118. You say, okay? So now we go and fix the temperature here. Press double click on this. It's going to be 118. Say OK. And this one, 118. Yeah, 118 degrees Fahrenheit. My units are set to uh, temperature in Fahrenheit. Now, when I run this thing, you will see that these individually expand, but that's because they don't see each other. I mean, these are fully bonded, but if you run it, you're going to see that they <coughs> individually get longer. That's pretty much it. Look, there, you can see that. <coughs> they don't see each other. So if they're fully bonded, they have to create a connection between the surface of the aluminum and the top surface of the steel and make that fastened, fastened, fully bonded, glued, okay? So let's deactivate this. <coughs> Let me change the rendering here. All right, so we're gonna create a connection Hide that, top surface, first component, this surface, second component, go to the hidden mode, and select that, say OK, I'll bring this in the front. And do not forget, surface slider, even the, the run that I just made would have been wrong, because I forgot the surface slider here. But anyway, this is okay. And guess what's gonna happen? Can you guess? This is gonna bend down. This uh, connection, this connection that we created right here, right there, we created that, okay. And it's gonna be fastened, fastened because they're perfectly glued together. And it puts that uh, uh, fastener sign there to remind us that it is going to, the fully bonded. And it's going to bend down. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Why would that happen? Uh, there. And the reason, the reason is this. I mean, maybe, maybe you can easily see it. I don't know. But look at the front view. Look at the front view. You can see that actually it's not side view, maybe. Look, it bent down. The reason is this. 
the thermal coefficient of aluminum is higher and for steel is lower. So aluminum wants to actually become longer, more than steel under that temperature rise. So when this thing wants to become longer, steel says, no way. I'm not going to let you do that. That's why it brings it down, brings it down. This wants to get longer. Steel says, no way. And the effect is it bring it, it's bringing it down. So it goes down because the coefficient of aluminum is higher than coefficient of steel. All right, folks, so that takes care of our uh, last assembly problem, at least for now. And uh, I'm gonna go to the hybrid. So let me get rid of this. And that. So <clears throat> what is this business of hybrid? A hybrid analysis in Katia when they talk about it, it means that in the same model, you have different types of elements. For example, in this particular problem, I have a combination of shell elements, solid element, and beam elements. So we have a structure like that. You look at this, although it is drawn for you in 3D, you should realize that we need to, in, in this course, we need to model this bulky thingy as solids, this plate as shell, and these things as beams. So that's what hybrid means. Now, <clears throat> let's not worry about the cable right now. I'll come to the issue of the cable later on. Is this, in other words, is this a beam that is welded here or is actually literally a cable? I want it to be a cable, but right now, let's pretend that these are welded together. This is actually a rod that is welded here. Now, <clears throat> uh, we can do this thing as a single part, assuming that all the materials are the same, single part, or we can do it as an assembly. I mean, obviously, if the materials are different, there's no way you can do it as a single part in Katia, at least. You have to do it as an assembly. But uh, right now, I'm going to assume it's all single part. And uh, yeah. Now, uh, the other thing is that you have option, as I said, you have option of doing it as a single part or an assembly. I will do it today as a single part, but we repeat this problem tomorrow's lab as an assembly. Okay, we'll come to that in a minute. The dimension of these things are given here. Now you might say, why do we have to do that? First of all, it's common sense that you have all of these popping up at the same time, right? So uh, uh, let me give you another example why this might be important. Suppose we have solved this problem, a single pressure vessel, and I told you there is danger around the seams here, well, that seams, and this uh, single shell model may not be able to predict that. So what people do, is either model the whole thing as solid and then try to uh, make a fine grid, etc., fine mesh here, etc., or they say, you know what, that corner I can model it with solid elements, and the rest of the structure I can model it as shell element, and hopefully if I've done it right, uh, they they talk to each other and I get detailed information, accurate information from solids as opposed to shell, because remember shells make a single assumption. The tacit assumption in shell theory is that all stresses through the thickness of the shell is zero. For example, if the thickness of the shell is in the Z direction, that means sigma ZZ, tau XZ, and tau YZ are zero. If the, thick, if the, if the, the direction of the, for example, uh, shell is, the thickness of the shell is X, any stress component that has an X in it is zero. So sigma XX, sigma XZ, and sigma XY are zero. So all of the stress component in the direction, in the thickness direction of the shell are zero. But that may not be the case. I mean, at, 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 the, at that junction, at that seam, there's all kind of crazy things that happen. So it's not reasonable to assume that the stresses in a certain direction are zero. So uh, here is one mesh and here is a different mesh. If you want to nice, get a nice uh, um, uh, quad mesh or hex mesh, uh, 
Uh, you have to do the advanced machine too. You cannot do it in the generative structure analysis. You can only uh, triangular pyramid like objects like that. Okay? Or shells, tetrahedral like that. Okay, so I'm going to do this problem for you. Notice that here's the situation. The bottom of these two are clamps. This edge is perfectly welded to that cylindrical object, and the end of the beam is perfectly welded to the uh, to the uh, the cords. Okay. Now, obviously, that's not going to be a cable behavior, but let me assume that these are rods. The dimensions are given here, and uh, okay, so I'm going to do that. Uh, and, and, and by the way, the, the plate itself, this plate itself is subjected to a pressure. This plate itself is subjected to a pressure which is uh, uh, 100 PSI, right there, okay? Obviously, there's a plane of symmetry, and I'm not going to use it. But on the test, if there is a hybrid problem and there is a plane of symmetry, you have to use it, Okay. Maybe when we do this thing tomorrow in the lecture, uh, tomorrow uh, in the in the lab tomorrow, I will uh, use assembly and I will use plane of symmetry. I'll do that. Just remind me, please. All right, let's go ahead here. Because we are doing it as a single part, doesn't matter. I can start with the part file, and I'm going to stay there. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is to make that stand. That stand is two inches high. You can see that two inches high. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, uh, let, in, uh, let me, on that plane, I will sketch. And I think the radius of that thing is, the radius of this thing is uh, uh, oh yeah, 0.5. Radius is 0.5. This is the view from the top, okay? So uh, radius is 0.5. So we go here. <coughs> I draw a... A circle just to make my job easier I draw it at the center tomorrow this is going to be useful because when we cut it we have a appropriate place to cut it with there we are exit padded by two inches by two inches there is my cylinder now I want to draw because this is a hybrid problem that plate has to be modeled with shell elements, okay? So here's the way I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to create a surface up here, a, a plane up there. So uh, let me get a plane offset from here, height of one. And I sketch something in that plane. In that plane, I'm going to sketch something which looks like that, or the dimensions are given here, okay? So let me do this, go back to Gadea. On that plane, I will sketch a circle that size. Well, why don't I project that so that I do one less step. There we are. And then I do the rest of this uh, uh, thingy. Clean it up, go like that, like so. We clean it up. Okay, first of all, I want this guy to reach there, so that control this point, we make a coincident. Very good. I want uh, this line control, that line control this axis to be symmet symmetric. Very good. And dimensions now, dimensions. Uh, this is supposed to be two inches based on the drawing and this is supposed to be two inches also okay very good now exit because this is a closed curve almost it's not quite quite close uh it you see the problem is that uh, this is sketch that i do in there will not allow me to fill this thing. F-I-L-L. -L. Do you remember F-I-L-L? -L? So let me go back to that sketch. Get rid of that circle. Actually, we don't need it right now. Exit. We'll come back and, 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 and do it. Okay, good. Now, I can do F-I-L-L, -L, create a surface here. But a surface, you cannot do it here. 
you have to go to uh, mechanical design as soon as you say surface wireframe and surface design and there is f-i-l-l -L right there see that f-i-l-l -L. this is how you make surfaces f-i-l-l -L. and it's already pre-selected so it puts a surface here the only thing is that i need a hole in there so to make the hole what i can do is i can uh, uh, go on that face see that on that face i use sketch sketch Either I can project that circle or draw a circle of radius 0.5. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to project. There we are. Exit. And let me hide this thing so that you can see what's happening here. This is what's happening. There is a surface here and there is a, something that I want to connect with. So get the saw. There's a saw. It says element to cut is that surface. Cutting element is that edge or that circle. And we say okay uh, you know there are other ways of doing it but uh, this is obviously how I'm trying it so let me bring that in the front so this is the situation that we have now we want to create now we want to create these lines all right so here's what I'm gonna do uh, a, a, a line we, we are in wireframe and surface design you can see that and therefore I can draw all kinds of things uh, a line, you know, helix, etc. But I want a line, and the way I'm going to do that is this: the method of the line that I'm going to use is going to be, for example, I can say point and direction, point and direction, right? And what is that point? This point. And what is the direction? Direction Z. And how far up do I want to go? Three inches. Three inches. Because that's what the drawing says. Okay, good. And I do exactly the same thing on this side. Another another line. Point and direction. This other point. In the direction Z. And once again three. So it's going to be up there. And everything is made out of steel. So we can apply steel to this. Remember this is a part. Therefore uh, there is no issue. So steel on that part, we say OK, and we are pretty much done. So let me save the thing. File, save management, save as uh, one level up, folder, pro, uh, what is it called, hybrid, hybrid. My first problem is hybrid as a single part, of course, which is OK. So we just put it there. Good. Now. Now we're going to go to uh, analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. CATIA sees a single part and it measures a solid part and measures it. And if you want to see the mesh, right click mesh visualization, you say OK, and there we are. The beam, the beam, and the uh, and the uh that surface you have to mesh yourself one other thing notice that i did not join that beam i did not join that beam and let's see if that causes a problem if this was a sketch you would have to join it okay but this is not a sketch let's see if it's causing a problem or not <coughs> all right so uh, let me deactivate this guy. Why don't we worry about the shell first? So here is the shell element. I'm not doing a fancy mesh, so I can do it right here in the generative structure analysis. You select it. You select that. It says, what is the size? Uh, well, right now, I'll put the point so you see whether it looks good or not. It's right there. You see this? I think that's probably too, too big. So why don't I make this thing? All the stuff about that you have learned about shells, meshing shells, and things like that is applicable. What did I have here? I'll make it point 0.1. Good, good. And give it the thickness. Don't forget the thickness right there, right there. 2D, 2D property on that. And the thickness is point 0.1 because I think that's what the problem said. Thickness of point 0.1, yeah. If not, you just change it. 
Now, if you go and see it right click, or uh, say, say act, activate this, you see that both the solid and the shell are going to pop up. Okay. Now, now remember the nodes here do not talk to the nodes of the solid. We have to fix that. Deactivate that. Now we're going to do the uh, the beam elements. So here, beam. We select this. Notice that it did actually mesh it. There was no problem. But if this was a sketch, not having meshed it and not having joined it, it would not work. So you you have to join. So you say okay. But how many elements did I have here? Sorry, let's go back here. I didn't pay attention on how many elements we have. Remember, this whole thing was three inches, so the size is one. So there are three elements there at that point. And then uh, same thing on this this guy. Same thing. And give it a thickness. Uh, <clears throat> now notice that here the drawing, it looks like it is a square of cross section. I mean, this cross section is a, uh, 0.05 by 0.05. If this was a circle, circular section, there would be no problem. But here I need an orientation point, which I have. I can use these sides here. So let's see now. 1D property. Uh, the support is this. You have to do these separately. And the type is rectangular, 0.05 by 0.05. 0.05 by 0.05. Okay, I won't let you close it because you need an orientation point. The orientation point, I will select this other end. And notice that when I do that, if I can pick it, let me hide this. Can I hide? Can I select this point? Let me hide, let me hide that sketch. Now, can I select this? Yes. And now when you look at it, it is oriented properly, okay? And believe me, it is. Just to convince you that it is properly, let me make these dimensions one by one so that you can see it better. One by one. I say one by one, sorry. One by one. That's the way it should be, right? Still one by two. <laughs> okay, one by one. That's the correct orientation, see that? But I didn't want it one by one, I wanted 0.05 by 0.05. And say okay. And then I can close it, and I do exactly the same thing on the other one. Uh, so where's the other one? Where's the other line? It's hiding, I didn't show, I'll go back here, <coughs> I do the same thing. Uh, 1D property on that, uh, uh, rectangular, the size is correct, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, the orientation, and I select this end. Okay, and believe me, it is correct. And then I can close it. All right, now, <clears throat> the bottom of this is clamped. This bottom is clamped, okay. And the top is subjected to pressure. This, uh, oh, these, these top pieces are also clamped. I forgot to do that. Let's do that now. So this and that are clamped. And the top is subjected to pressure. 100 PSI. Negative. Not negative. Positive. Because it's pushing into the plate. And you can see that it's down here. If you, if you don't see it because it's hiding down there. Right. Uh, actually... Uh, that should be negative now because it's pushing it up. Oh. Let's go to load and pressure. I should put a negative number there. Yeah, that's that's good. Now, <clears throat> let me save the analysis files, file, save management, analysis in that folder. Save as, we just put it there, hybrid. Yeah, okay. Very good. The problem is that if I run it now, it's going to bomb bomb out. You'll see why in a minute. Uh, it's going to bomb out. There we are. And if you say, show me, okay, I know that you bombed out, but show me why. There. So it says that, hey man, 
These are not talking to each other. So I have to create the proper connections. So cancel that. Deactivate this. All right. First of all, I want this surface to be completely welded to that surface, that plate. Okay. So how do I do this? Create a connection. So connections also work for parts, and I'm going to do that right now. So one connection, and I call this thing, uh, call this thing, cylinder and plate. Cylinder. And plate. First component, surface of the cylinder. Second component, hide that and select the edge here. And then say OK. And we know this is going to be fastened. So while we are doing this thing, I might as well do that right now. So here is there is a fasten. See that? Fasten is in the face face. Fasten this and say fine. Okay. Now I have to do the same thing here. The end of this line and that corner. The end of this line and that corner. Okay, let's do that. Another connection. I say uh, line one. Line I'll call it line line one. One. First component, let me hide that. Oops, hide that. Select this corner point. Second component, bring that guy into the show mode. Hide the line. Let's try to select this point. If it's not doing it, just hide, hide that connection. That you're making, see that just just say hide it, hide it, please. Oops, <laughs> I meant to hide. There we go. Just say, hey, don't show me the icon. Okay, see now I can select it right there. So I created one like that, and this, if you try to say fasten. If you try to say fasten, it will not work. Look, just try it. Here is fasten. See that? Fasten. If you try to select this, it says, I can't do it. So when two points are supposed to move together, you can't say pass, fasten. You have to go to this distance connection property and say rigid, rigid. And it's this. It did. Okay, I'll come to that. This has to do whether it's acting like a cable or like a beam welded together. For now, let's not worry about it. Okay. And I have to repeat another connection for this side and make it another rigid. Okay, so let's do that. So another connection, I'll call this thing line two. Line two. First component. Okay, patiently. Let me. Hide this and select that end. For the second component, I bring that into the show mode. Hide the line. If it won't let me take that, hide the icon. You see, you put the cursor there or you put the cursor there. You say hide this. And then you can select that point. Two vertices. Oh, uh, remove that. Okay, this is the one that I wanted to take, right? It was that one. Okay, uh, one the end of the line, the other one the end of the uh, this corner point. Uh, never mind the handle point. We don't have to worry about it. And then we make that thing also rigid. If you try to make it faster, it says no way. I, won't, I don't understand. So you select this and. Uh, uh, this is rigid. Good, good. Okay, so let's bring everything there so that you don't think I'm shortchanging you. I didn't show that. I didn't show that. And now we're going to run it, and hopefully we haven't forgotten anything, and it will actually work. 
here and the reflection right there here is the um, uh, uh, here is the the color and it is if you animate it it's going to work now notice that these beams are actually bending these beams are actually bending look they're bending and if this is a cable this won't happen to take into account that what you do is you go to a rigid connection uh, in the properties in the properties rigid connection remember i said that this has to do with uh, whether it's cable or not you select transmitted degrees of freedom the only thing you don't want rotations to be transmitted because rotation means that bending is operating double click on that same thing with the other one i don't want rotation to be transmitted and then when you run it then when you run it and you say show me the deflection the the straight the, 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 the beams go straight down as if they were cable. The only thing is that if it's cable up there, if it's cable up there, you see that? It's cable up there, then you also have to release the degrees of freedom, but you can't do it. So what, what in reality you should have done was this. Let me deactivate that. Ah. Deactivate that. And I'll tell you what the issue is. This should not have been clamped. If it's a cable, rotation doesn't uh, doesn't do its uh, uh, doesn't do its function. So what we're going to do is we go to restrain restrain. Uh, what is the restrain here? I'm trying to find the restrain. Uh, oh, right here in the restrain. The second clamp I'm going to delete. From these, I'm going to say user define translations that point and this point. Rotations are not going to be checked here because if I did check the rotati rotation, it essentially becomes clamped. And I'm going to run it, and this is truly a cable. Uh, oh, yeah, that, that's uh, part of the reason maybe that. Uh, uh, oh yeah, because remember I uh, I released the degree of freedom completely here. We have to take away the spinning motion there. So I'm sorry. You go back there. You say okay, we will not where the spin which is about the z uh, z axis. The spinning is about the z axis. That's not going to do with bending. And we're gonna run it. And it's going to be fine. So uh, you might say there's not much of a difference. True, this is going straight down. Great. But if I clamp it here, it will not be correct. It will give you the color and it looks like that, but it will not be correct. All right, folks? So tomorrow in the lab, I will repeat this thing as an assembly. And I will make sure that these are cut into two halves. Okay, so symmetry is going to be taken into account, and of course you have to put proper symmetry, proper symmetry restraints on it in order to have it any meaning. Okay, uh, that's 